normal year, we'd be just now thinking about moving hay, storing hay, or feeding hay, or something like that. But uh, this year is 2022 in Kay County, Oklahoma, and well, we've been experiencing one of the worst droughts. So we've been feeding hay since September. But when moving hay, when putting it at its place where it's going to uh, be stored for quite some time, we need to think about a lot of things, especially waste, when it comes to storing these hay bales. So we're going to talk about a couple of ways to reduce hay waste. Number one, net wrap is superior to twine wrap. It covers the bale, it sheds water easier. Uh, number two would be choose a good site on well-drained ground. We definitely don't want it to be in a low-lying area that's going to gather water. Uh, you know, that seems pretty reasonable, but we forget about that. Other, uh, other things to think about, store them end-to-end -end so that they shed water better. Uh, also have them gapped about two foot between each other. And then the final one is get the hay bales off of the bare ground. Hay bales act like a wick. So either get them on concrete or as we're demonstrating in this video, pallets that you can get for free at a lot of feed stores, furniture stores, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the numbers of why we should store hay bales better. One of the first things worth mentioning when we're talking about round bales is the diameter of the bale. It is vitally important to know that because when we're talking about a five foot round bale of hay, one third of the grass is in the outside six inches. So looking at the chart here, a loss of four inches on that outside layer is 20% of the hay bale. And that's a whole lot of the hay. So it's vitally important, that first point that we mentioned, uh, to look at using net wrap versus twine wrap because we're going to see somewhere around a 4% savings, so to speak, in just twine versus net wrap. And that's from a study in Wisconsin that I looked up. So immediately we can save 4% just by going to net wrap. Also, elevating that hay bale off the ground with pallets or something like that during the growing season, or sorry, the storage season, we're gonna save probably another 5%. So just by doing those two things, we can save about 10% of this bale. Uh, I'd also like to point out that storage period at the end. When we start storing hay more than a year, we start losing a lot more of that hay bale. And we can see on this next chart, uh, loss of 20% at $100 per ton is gonna to be 20 bucks. and the more loss you have and a year like this in 2022 where hay prices have skyrocketed due to drought, it just, it's gonna cost you a whole lot more. So let's review real quick. What things do we want to do to make sure that we are reducing as much hay loss as possible? Number one would be use net wrap, about 4% savings there. Get it off the ground, about another five to 10% savings there store bales end to end and leave spaces between the rows so that it's not accumulating water. We're gonna talk about covering it if possible and definitely use it before that, or before it warms up during the season. Uh, you can see me covering it with the tarp here. This did not work well in Oklahoma where the wind blows. Uh, I used paracord to tie down a pretty heavy duty tarp and uh, the wind just did not care about that. So don't do that. But if you have the ability to cover, you can see on that chart there that there's even more savings that we can uh, you know, prevent the loss on uh, for those types of things. So if possible, cover it. Um, Oklahoma, we really didn't have a whole lot of luck with that this year uh, or any year for that matter. First 20 mile an hour wind really does a number on it. If you want to learn more about hay bale storage or any other type of subjects that OSU Extension might have information on, you can visit our website, extension.okstate.edu, and go to the search button to find fact sheets and type in what you'd like to find.